it is coming up to that festive time of year where we have to buy presents for people. So this video is what I'm going to title A Subtle Hint. This is my review of Thomarillion. When I bought my first dungeon set, and this is it, my first set of dungeon tiles, I needed things to put inside, and I wanted treasure piles. And I scoured online looking for good treasure piles, and I have to say, there's more available these days. But I found some real genuine treasures that when I bring these out today, people still marvel at how awesome they look. So these are the ones I found. And I just love how much stuff is going on in these. And this guy, this, this one, this huge treasure chest here has, a, has like a mage next to it. It could be an old necromancer or something. This one here has the skeleton of an adventurer. And you can rummage through their corpse. They've obviously, you know, they came a cropper in the dungeon and your adventuring party is following them down. And there's just so much going on, so much lovely little detail in these treasure piles. And now, you know, as time's gone on, I've got more treasure piles, I've got bigger treasure piles, but when I get these out, people always pick them up and have a look at them because they're just so marvelous and full of character. Of course, once I found treasure piles, I just saw everything else on the site and wanted it all. So here's a setup of a lich's lair. And let's take a look. As we come into the main entrance here, we are greeted by these two alcove things stating clearly of the necromantic intent behind this little mini dungeon. If you were to venture left on your way in, you'd get to the bedroom of the necromancer where his wardrobe is and his little bureau, lovely little uh, furniture pieces that just make any scene a bit more believable. I've got some bookcases here and then we've got a, a kind of a personal motif up on the wall and this lovely uh, sort of magic circle type thing. There's several designs on the site. I, I chose this one because I felt it could work both indoor and out and it, it kind of has that kind of draconic flavour to it. I love the rooms on it. But if we go over to the other side, we'll see that we're in the bathroom of the necromancer and he has a mirror that he might turn, you might have this the other way around and you've got a talking mirror. Uh, there's, there's this wonderful little bath and a little bucket there to refill it with and my favourite of all is the privy. <laughs> there's even a little book which you could use to wipe. Here in the torture chamber we have this altar for sacrifices. It's decorated with lots of holly and potion bottles and other little bits and bobs and trinkets. This side has got this kind of demonic face on it. On top is a, a book of rituals. We've got this torture rack and this uh, sort of dungeon wall section where somebody has been held prisoner a little too long. Uh, these are, are wonderful little things. Um, they're, they're cages. Um, they're, they're really light. Um, but they do actually fit miniatures, perfectly sized. And um, it's just, you know, that kind of that traditional dungeon tortury chamber. But as we move on through the dungeon, we head to the necromancer's personal altar to his demon lord. It's also where he keeps his treasure and has his throne where he sits and worships his demon lord. <laughs> but one of the wonderful things about decorating your, your dungeon setups with something like this is we can very quickly and easily change the entire theme of that little dungeon into something else completely. Just by changing what's in the rooms, we've completely changed the tone of our adventure in our opening foyer room here. We've now got a statue puzzle. And over here, some classic adventuring tropes. We've got what's possibly a magic pool with some runic stones. Maybe if you can decipher the language, you can figure out 
What is the nature of this pool? We've got the classic weapons rack thing going on. We have a fountain here that in this case has run dry, but I, I could easily uh, fill that with water. We've got like a lovely dragon head motif on that. Over the other side, what was a bedroom is now a library, complete with racks and racks of books on shelves. And as we venture deeper into the dungeon, what used to be a torture chamber, is now a kitchen. We've got a little bakery here. We have a spit roast going on. We've got some some cupboards and another uh, sort of bureau-y chest type thing with books. Uh, we've got a couple of bureaus. And then, as we move on, a cavern full of crystals. The variety of things you can get and decorate your dungeons with can completely change the ambience of your adventures. And one of the things I love about Thermarillion is there's so much variety throughout their, their shop sections that are just full of different things you can put into a standard dungeon set like this. But they don't just do furniture. One piece that whenever it appears on my videos, I always get asked, where did you get it from? And from now on, I'll link to this video. Have a look. This medieval building makes the perfect tavern setting for any adventure, complete with streets either side. I've decorated here with uh, some Thomarillion pub tables. They're kind of like a, an ale cask being turned into a table, as are the chairs. Uh, they also do these characters. We've got a couple of dwarves here, one sort of giving a thumbs up, and another one is uh, is drunk on the table. Um, and on top of that, it also do these bar pieces, complete with cupboards behind the bar. Uh, there's this kind of row of tankards on on a you know a, a decorative piece, and we have here, and we have here. A tavern brewery. So this particular tavern is a microbrewery complete with all the herbs and spices and hops and barley and all the other things they put into the, the beer. But this building, it's light, tough and it's an interesting material because this is foam. This is a hard foam so it's like a, a it's moulded but it's put in under incredible pressure and it's very dense, so it makes it quite a, a tough, strong thing. You can kind of sculpt this, you get like a ballpoint pen and you can sort of add brickwork if you want and stuff. But the thing that's interesting with this material is it's possible to make some really rather sizable pieces, including this wonderful, very much film-inspired Balin's tomb complete with the, the columns of Moria. We have Balin himself, his, uh, his corpse lying on the, the sarcophagus in the room. It's even got the well. We've got the big oak doors and uh, that, that get bashed open in the fellowship. Um, and little sewer vents on both sides here where you could have monsters rush out and ambush your players. We've got elevation changes in the setting. It's a wonderful fixed setting piece. Now, maybe your other half is like me and you're looking to get a gift and you don't know what to get them. And they spend a lot of time looking at pictures of castles online, like this one, which the thing about buying castles for any mini collector is they can be hugely, hugely expensive. Hundreds of pounds. Well, Thomarillion's not card foam, as you covered. <laughs> now, this particular giant centerpiece for any gaming table is, uh, is actually the last one that will ever be made of this mould, but it's not the only castle Thermarillion do. They've got a lovely dwarven style one as well, which I'd love to add to my collection. Hint, hint. And what I love about these, these, uh, you know, these particular large hard foam uh, buildings is 
they're really cost effective. This castle cost half what it would cost from the next cheapest castle that I was looking at. And it, it's just as detailed. I mean, there's nothing wrong. This is, this is a wonderful, huge piece. It's not just nothing wrong with it, it's lovely. You know, I've, I've decorated obviously with a few plants and you know, we've got the well going on and there's inbuilt. It kind of makes sense as a castle. It's, it's got everything a castle should have and everything you need in a gaming sense to run a castle encounter. Or if you're going to have it on a war gaming table, you know, you've got the battlements, you've got plenty of places to defend it, uh, you've got places it could be assaulted and it's a wonderful, wonderful piece. And I couldn't imagine doing a, a building this size out of plastic or resin. It just costs a fortune, but the Thomarillion knock hard foam that they use, it makes this stuff possible. It makes it possible to own amazing pieces like this. Thomarillion do also do their own dungeon set called Dunkelstadt. And I don't have Dunkelstadt as a dungeon set, but I do have this kind of sampler, as it were, that I've done up as a, a kind of a church for really evil encounters. So uh, we've got this wonderful organ here, which I, I just love this. It's the only place I've ever seen that sells an organ. I mean, it's just what a magnificent model. Uh, we have a pulpit and, you know, church pews. But if we put all of that away, what we've got is an affordable, modifiable dungeon set. If I wanted to scalpel cut into the foam and lift up some tiles so that I could place a hidden compartment underneath, with Dunkelstadt, you can do that. If I want to add some extra details by engraving the surface with a ballpoint pen, with Dunkelstadt, I can do that. The only thing I can't do is say the name properly. One of my most useful and versatile Thomarillion things is this market set. So uh, it comes as a kind of a framework and you, you just sort of drape ordinary toilet tissue over it and then paint it up, uh, which is what I've done here. Um, oh, you, you cover it in PVA glue, let it dry, and that's how you make this lovely canvas effect on these frames. But what I, what I really love are these kind of market stands. I did that one backwards, there we go. So we've got this lovely sort of cloth in front. We've got these, this, this cutlery vendor. We've got a, a weapon vendor. We've got a, a meat and food vendor. And you know, there's so many things you can do with that when you're running an adventure. Uh, I love the park bench and the, the chickens and the roosters. Well, what rooster? They just add to every scene I put them in, which is why I so often use these. In closing, I have been a customer of Thomarillion since I started collecting dungeon pieces because I love their stuff. I especially love this castle. And it's not just that you can buy something, paint it up, and you've got a magnificent finished piece. They do crafting supplies too, and they, they also do stuff in materials that you can recraft. This thing didn't have windows in when I bought it. I added those, not terribly well, it was my first time, but I think I've done okay. So that's my review of Thomarillion. It's also, as I said at the start of this review, a very subtle hint.